everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about how to release the hip flexors. Um, so basically hip flexion is when you are in, when your hips come into this position. Now for a lot of us, and by us I don't mean riders, I mean us in general, hip flexion is something that occurs very regularly when we're driving the car, when we're sitting at a desk perhaps at work, when we're studying for students. Um, when we're at home watching television on the sofa, unless you've got your legs up, you'll have some hip flexion going on. So we tend to be in this very flexed hip position like I am now a lot of the time. And then if you're a rider, you tend to be in this position even more. So a common complaint is tight hip flexors. Now, hip flexors are a group of muscles that flex the hip. They're not just located to the sort of, sort of front of the thigh that we commonly think of. So any muscle that contributes to flex flexion of the hip needs to be released in order to attain hip flexion, um, hip release, let me, should I say. So any, any muscle that, that causes this action will need to be released. So in this video, I'm just going to run you through a series of exercises which will release different um, muscle groups which will help you have sort of slightly looser hips. So you're going to need a foam roller for this video, I've got this one here. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is roll out our um, tense fascia latte. Um, so what you want to do is get your foam roller and you want to position it so it's just sort of on this, the outside portion of your leg, just around about here, from the hip and then down to the knee. So not on the middle of the quad, but just on the outside. So you can roll up and down. We're going to do this for about 30 seconds. And it can get quite painful. And you can obviously increase or decrease the pressure by you know, how much pressure you put on the leg versus how much you're holding in your arms. And you want to do this first before you're doing stretching, just to sort of pair the muscles. Get right up in there. And for a lot of people, this is almost unbearable. And the more that you do this, and the more that you stretch this out, the better. So this can be something that you can start to do daily. Do that on the side as well. So this can be sort of something that you can start off by having as a mini goal if you're somebody that is particularly tight, and then you can just work up. So there's no set particular way, the best way to do this. You just need to find sweet spots and then go over them. Now, there's no set period, but really you want to be doing a minimum of 30 seconds a minute's probably a good amount of time to spend doing this, and then you can um, you can do it up, you know, up five ten minutes if you really want to. Okay. So once you've frame rolled off both sides, then we can come on to a stretch. <coughs> so what I want you to do is come into like a low lunge. But is uh, sorry, like a high lunge, like this. So you don't want to have um, too much knee over toe. We're trying to keep it relatively parallel, and then you should feel the stretch down the leg that is on the floor. And so what you want to do here is tense up the butt cheeks, switch on the core, then raise the arms overhead, lean forward a little bit. Now, if you're really tight, you will feel this already, all the way down, and that's absolutely fine. And you almost want to. Squeeze the butt into the pain. But then to get an increased stretch into this muscle, you can move your hands away from the leg that is on the floor. And this isn't a static stretch, this is like a passive mobilization. So you can just move into range. And you can do this for either a number of reps, you could do it for 30 reps, you could do it for amount of time, 30 seconds to 60 seconds. If you're going to be someone who's going to do this like every day or if you few times a week, then you could almost set a timer up for a minute and just roll through each exercise on each side. If you're somebody that's only going to get to it once or twice a week, you might want to commit a little more time in each session. And you're working with the biting point, so when you feel that sweet spot, you're almost massaging it with the movement. So when you feel it, there's no right or wrong. You're just trying to get right in there. And obviously we're going to do that on the other side as well. <clears throat> 
So start by making sure the butt is clenched, the core is on, bring the arms overhead, feel that stretch. And again, if you're really tight, this might be enough for you just now. But if you have a little more range, then bring the arms away from the leg that's on the floor. So the next thing we're going to do is roll out the quad. It's relatively easy to do. You just want to make sure that the middle of your leg is running straight over the front roller. Now you can do this with double legs at the same time to start off with. Um, it's not going to be as intense, but you can start off that way. Oops. So you can, this might be a nice gentle way to warm into it. Because it can get quite painful. So, like I said, there's no real right or wrong way to do this. You just get used to the footwork as you do it. As long as it's clumsy when I'm doing it, you see people look very good. Now, moving on to the single leg, make sure the meat of the leg is right down on the roll end. So you get right up to the hip joint and then down just above the knee. Once you find a sweet spot, you can just, you know, if you find a bit that there's a, a bit of a knot or a little bit of tightness up to me, it's up here, you can just swing the leg over it a little bit. And again, like obviously for the sake of the video I'm just showing you, but if you're on your own doing this, you could dedicate a good period of time. Try and dedicate the same amount or, or similar amounts of time to each leg. Regardless if one feels tight than the other, you want to kind of give both the same care. And you can, if it's particularly, like if you find a bit that is particularly tight, you can sort of flex and extend the knee and then sort of massage it out that way. So, yeah, no real right or wrong here. Just open up them fibres, release the muscles really important part of your fitness that uh, a lot of people overlook because it's boring, this is kind of boring, but um, it's essential in my opinion and part of the self-care package. So once you've done that, <coughs> there's a few different ways to stretch out the quad and you can obviously do a standing quad stretch um, so you can hold on to uh, a wall, let's do it over here, so. so you can stand onto a wall and stretch out the quad. You want to think about tucking the tailbone underneath you, having your core switched on, your butt cheeks clenched. You should be able to bring your, eventually, heel to your butt cheek. Now, if you're fairly flexible, because of course that's not going to be that intense, so you can uh, increase the range by using a, a wall for assistance. Now, you could use the wall, you could also use a couch. So, uh, you can come first. Come down onto your knees and then bring the one leg up onto a raised surface. Make sure you're still protecting those knees. If you're on a hard surface like me, you might need a cushion underneath your knee. And the aim is to keep the pelvis tucked underneath you and then bring your body back towards your foot. And then you get much more um, of a deeper stretch into that quad if you're particularly now. Eventually, uh, it's a bit difficult for me to do because it's a hard, hard floor here but eventually you can start to bring your body back so that you get the, the heel right to the butt cheeks. But always think about having the, the glutes activated and the core activated. So once you feel a nice release in that leg, you can go along and do exactly the same on the other side. So for me, personally, this is more intense than the standing wall course. Standing quarter stretch, but for you, if it just depends on how tight or flexible you are. And you don't have to stay dead still, you can sort of move through the range and the biting points. That's up to you what you want. Okay, 
okay, so once you've done that, we're going to actually work on our adductors to our groin, which is often an overlooked area. When we're thinking about our hips, people tend to focus on just the hips. But it's actually really important to focus on you know, the quads, uh, the adductors, and other major muscle groups that contribute to hip flexion. So this is one that you might want to save for at home because it can look a little on the dodgy side. So if you place the foam roller um, slightly at an angle and then you basically want to put it underneath your groin and then again no right or wrong you can just start to get into that groin a little bit and um, a lot of people are very tight in the groin so you can come into your hands and Really, and like I keep saying, there's no right or wrong because people still follow these videos like machines. But what you're trying to do is just find the sweet spot. There, there's it for me. So for here, I can just, I know it looks a bit dodgy, and you might want to say this, but you can just sort of roll around like with your groin on the sweet spot, and just like you can use your body and your weight to like kind of roll it out if you like. And usually, it's quite high up. That you uh, get the, tuck, the tightness that you might need to um, work with. Put it this way, I'm not going to be doing this in the middle of the gym floor. But each to their own. So again, 30 to 60 seconds. If you want to spend longer, that's absolutely fine. And then you want to make sure that you do the same. Down here to start with them. You can just reposition the roller to go around, finding the sweet spot. You'll probably find it slightly deep if you come down to the knee. Once you find where it's tight, just move around, using different, just, just whatever feels good. And sometimes it can be quite overwhelming, the, um, the tightness. So once you've used the frame roller on both sides, you can do a little bit of a adductor stretch. So, you're going to have one knee bent on the floor on the opposite leg. We're going to bring it out. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to rock back and forwards. And we're going to try and keep a straight spine. So instead of rounding, we're going to try and keep the spine straight. So almost thinking about hip hinging. And you can start to bring this leg around. You should start to feel that stretching the adductors. Bring the spine to the toe to come up. But you don't want to be punching that, you want to be thinking about a nice straight back and spine. And you can also sort of move into the... You're just trying to find where your bite is, because we're all different, we're all tight in slightly different areas of the body. And once you've done these things, Side. Move it this way. I can immediately feel this one feels tighter. And the reason I'm looking down is you want your head to be in the same alignment as your spine. You don't want to cause any extra pressure on the back. So you just gaze, sort of go and nose. If you feel any tightness in the fingers, you can come with your palms. Uh, So that concludes the sort of mobility routine for today, hip flexor opening. I really wanted to um, highlight the point that hip flexor tightness doesn't just come from hip flexors, they're a group of muscles. Any muscle that contributes to hip flexion will cause tightness.
tightness in the hip, if you like. So really focusing on our quads, adductors, tensor fascia latae. Our iliopsoas, so our iliacus and our psoas muscles are quite difficult to get to, which is why I haven't really included them here. If you are really, really tight, you might want to see a physical therapist or a physiotherapist to help you release those. Um, because I'm not a trained um, therapist in that sense, I don't want to give you any exercises to work on the, on the iliopsoas myself. Um, but there are lots of YouTube videos where you might be able to find information on that. Um, but one thing that, that you can just do, which again I'm not going to go to doing in the gym, is um, is to when you're lying down just sort of come in and find the tightness and just give it a, ma a massage with your with your hands, so like here, and you can find you'll find like a tightness in your hip, in your hip just below your hip joint, and you can work on sort of releasing that, uh, which might might help. You can also um, release the psoas in terms of taking the load off the psoas by placing the leg elevated and, and the lower back. So if you're watching telly or you're just relaxing, this can just take the load off the inner psoas, which can be nice a few times a week. Um, but getting into that muscle or those group of muscles is actually quite complicated. So uh, you might want to seek some specialist help if you are very, very, very tight as well. So, obviously there's lots of other hip exercises and stretches that we can do, and because this is such an important focus for riders, this is going to be something that I will do videos on more regularly. But for the sake of today, I hope you found this mobility and stretching routine helpful. Um, let me know if you tried it. Uh, if you like this video and want to see more like this, hit the like button, and make sure to, make sure to subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out, it helps me create new YouTube content for you weekly and it lets me know that you're interested and this is the sort of direction that you'd like me to take this in. 